learners. We're excited that you're back with us again. My name is Miss Sarah with Auburn Day School. And I'm Miss Katie. Today, we're learning about changes and we're learning about the solar system. What's a solar system? I'm so glad you asked. The solar system is the sun and everything that travels around it. Oh, so it's like outer space. Exactly, and it, it's everything that's in outer space. Oh, what's in outer space? Hmm. I have a song for that. Would you like to learn it? Yes. Okay, take Mr. Sun down. Awesome. We're gonna need a big bright moon and a rocket that goes zoom. So say that with me. A big bright moon and a rocket zoom. Two words on their rhyme. Did you hear them? Moon and zoom. They kind of sound alike. All right, it goes like this. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? A big bright moon and a rocket zoom. That's what's in outer space. I think they have that one. Mm -hmm. Next verse. Oh, what's in outer space? A shining star, sun, our only star. Let's try it again. The shining sun, sun our, our only star. star. That's right. All right, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? The shining sun, our only star. That's what's in outer space. We got that one. Now, our third verse has the planets going around the sun. Now, right now, Miss Katie's only putting up one, two, three planets, but we really have eight planets in our solar system. We just don't have room for them right now. So we'll put them up three. Right That's right. Okay, so this one is the planets going around the sun. Can you show me how that works? How do those planets going around the sun? That's right. The planets going around the sun. That's what's in outer space. Let's sing it. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? The planets going around the sun. That's what's in outer space. Do you think we can do the whole song? I think we can. All right, we're going to need to add the rocket back to our board. We'll put it way down here. Zoom. And I'm also going to add the moon. What do you notice about the moon that I'm adding now? Uh, that moon got a whole lot smaller. It did get a lot smaller. That's because now that we have these planets up here, we have to make sure the moon is the right size. And the moon is smaller than the Earth, the planets, and the sun. So that's why we have a tiny moon now, because we've got all those planets. We have to make sure it's the right size. Awesome. I love it. Okay, so we're still going to call it the big bright moon because yes. when I'm looking at it from here, it's still big and bright. It still looks bright and big. All right, are you ready? Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? A big bright moon and a rocket zoom. That's what's in outer space. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? The shining sun, our only star. That's what's in outer space. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? The planets going around the sun. That's what's in outer space. I have on it. That was good. We're going to use that song a lot during the lesson today. So keep that in your back pocket so we can use it. You know, I wonder what our friends know about the solar system. Hmm. Let's find out. What do you know about the sun? That it's, it keeps the earth warm and it gives light to the moon and light to our earth. I know that the, the sun is a big, big star. The earth is made of rock. Hey friends, let's read a book about our solar system. This book is called There's No Place Like Space and it has some interesting facts about our solar system in it. There's No Place Like Space, All About Our Solar System, by Tish Rabe and illustrated by Aris Aristides Ruiz. This book is read with permission from Random House Publishing. There's No Place Like Space. I'm the cat in the hat, and we're off to have fun. We'll visit the planets, the stars, and the sun. There's no place like space. I will prove it to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Jump in. Here we go. We'll fly up so high. We can dance on the moon and play games in the sky. We will swing past the stars, and in case you have missed them, you'll soon see. 
the planets in our solar system. There are eight of these planets that circle the sun, and soon you'll be able to name every one. Mercury's close to the sun's burning light. It's hot in the daytime, but it's freezing at night. On Venus, the weather is always the same. Hot, dry, and windy with no chance of rain. Can you guess the next planet? Well, here's a clue. It is my home and home to thing one and thing two. You have been living on it each day since your birth. It's the third from the sun. It's our planet, Earth. It spins all the time round and round like a top. It turns once every day and it never will stop. This question had thing one and thing two in a tizzy. If the earth's always spinning, why don't we feel dizzy? We don't feel the earth as it spins on its way, because we're spinning right with it, right now, every day. Next, here is Mars. It's the color of rust. We sneeze here because it's covered with dust. Travel to Jupiter and you will find it is bigger than all the other planets combined. Saturn has rings. It's so light, who would think? It could afloat in the ocean and not even sink. A planet can have satellites that surround it. Uranus has lots of these objects around it. There are colors in space. I will show some to you. Neptune, planet 8, is a beautiful blue. Now we have seen all the planets. Now here's a trick to remember their names and remember them quick. Say, Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mickles just saved up 999 nickels. The first letter of each of these words is the same as the first letter in each of the planets you name. Mallory, Valerie, Emily, Mickles just saved up 999 nickels. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Now here is a game you can play in the skies. Connect all the stars you can see with your eyes. It's a star dot to dot. Use your imaginations and you'll see big pictures we call constellations. A dog, the great bear, and Leo the lion, Taurus the bull, and a hunter, Orion. A star in the sky may look small like a dot, but it's really a big glowing ball and it's hot. And there's one star by far that's our favorite one. We can't live without it. The star called the sun. From the earth, it looks big. There's one reason why. It's the closest to earth of all the stars in the sky. But be careful and never look right at the sun. Your eyes would get hurt, and that would not be fun. How big is the sun? We just heard right this minute a million of our Earths could fit all right in it. Oh, look at the time. We must go very soon. But first, we must take a quick look at the moon. The moon does not shine in the sky at the night, but like a mirror, it reflects the sun's light. Astronauts flew to the moon to explore, a place no one had ever been to before. They walked on the moon and then drove all over in a special moon car called a lunar rover. An astronaut studies what's up in the sky. Thing two wants to be one. In fact, so do I. The universe is a mysterious place. We are only just learning what happens in space. So I brought you a present to look in the sky. Just put this telescope up to your eye. Oh dear, I must go fly back up to the stars and take things one and two out to dinner on Mars. But there's a lot to discover and it might be you who looks up in the sky and find something new.
Glossary. An astronaut is a person who pilots a spacecraft or works in space. Astronomer. A person who studies the planets, stars, moon, sun, and other celestial bodies. Constellation. A group of stars that form a pattern in the sky that looks like a picture. A lunar rover. A vehicle used by astronauts to explore the surface of the moon. A satellite. A natural or man-made object that moves around a planet. Solar system. The sun and all the planets that move around it. Telescope. An instrument that uses lenses to make faraway objects appear closer. Universe. Everything that exists, including the earth, the planets, the stars, and all of space. The end. Part 1. The Sun. So, what I noticed in the song and in the book, that the sun is a star. It's actually our nearest star. And things revolve around the sun. What does that look like for something to revolve? I'm glad you asked. Let's use the earth. The earth is a planet and it revolves or it goes around the sun. Oh. Let's do it again. Ready? Revolve. Now, another name for revolve is orbit. Oh, Everybody okay. said orbit. Orbit. Awesome. That's cool. Do you think you could make this revolve or do yeah, an orbit around try. the sun? Okay, here she goes. The earth is revolving or making an orbit. Hey, I was thinking, sun. do you think I can like act out revolving? I don't know, can you? Like, I'm not the earth, but I could pretend to be the earth and revolve around the sun. Okay, let's okay, do it. Okay, I'm gonna pretend the counter's the sun, and then I'm gonna revolve all the way around it. Okay, count down with me for her start. Ready? Three, two, one, blast off. All the way around, Woo! this is a big orbit. Wish I had my binoculars. Woo! 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 There she goes. Hey, do it again, don't just do it once. All right, do you guys wanna join me this time? I'll do, I'll count down for you too. Ready? Okay. Three, two, one, blast off. Woo! Oh, I see you all orbiting. Oh, watch out for that couch over there. Yeah, yeah. that wouldn't be good. Yeah. Woo! What a great that was orbit. Fun. That was awesome. Hey, do you remember when we learned about solids, liquids, and gases? Yeah, I remember that lesson. I bring that up because the sun is called the dwarf, yellow dwarf star, and it's made up of gases. Oh, you remember gases, you can't always see them, but they are um, contained by their container. So they take up the shape of their container. What kind of gases are in the sun? Good question. The most, it's mostly made up of helium and hydrogen. You know, that word helium is really familiar to me and I feel like I've heard it before. Yeah, if you've gone into Party City or Dollar Tree or Kroger, you might have seen some helium. Wait a minute. Seen helium? Can you see helium? Mm, maybe if it's like captured in something. That's exactly right. I have captured some helium for you. <gasps> so oh, balloon! I love balloons. Yeah. And the helium ones are the best because they float like this one. See how it's floating all by itself? But why is it so, floating? Um, is it because of the helium? Yes. Helium is lighter than air, so helium will float. Oh, wow, that's really neat. That's and I didn't even know that this had helium inside. You can kind of see when I squish it. It won't squish because there's something inside, but when I shake it, I don't hear anything. So that's how we know there's that gas inside. So cool. So the sun is made up mostly of helium and hydrogen, and it's super duper hot. It is very hot. The sun is responsible for providing light and heat and energy to all the things on Earth. Just think, if we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't get that light, and it would be really, really dark here on Earth and we wouldn't get heat and it would be really, really cold and we wouldn't get energy from the sun that plants and animals need. So that means we wouldn't have plants, we wouldn't have animals, we wouldn't have bugs, we wouldn't have dogs, we wouldn't have cats, we wouldn't have elephants or cheetahs or bananas or can't. No, it'd just be a really sad place. It would. Why do you have your sunglasses on? Well, we're learning about the sun and I thought we were about to go do some cool experiments outside with the sun and I learned it's important to protect your eyes because if you look right at the sun, all of that light that's shining could really hurt your eyes. So don't look right at the sun. In fact, if it's a sunny day outside, 
you need to wear those sunglasses to protect your eyes and your vision because the sun yep. is really, really strong, even though it is years away from us. Yep. But I'm ready to go. Let's do some experiments with the sun. All right. We'll catch you outside. Experiment. What can the sun melt? Materials. Muffin tin. Assorted items. Sunny spot. Hey friends, we are outside in the sun and we are going to talk about what things melt in the sun. Now we said that the sun provides light, heat, and energy. So if it provides heat, then what's going to happen to some of these things? Some of these things may, that's right, they may melt. What I want you to do is I want you to find a muffin tin inside. Ask an adult which one you could take outside and then find some things inside and outside that you want to test and see what the sun's going to melt. Now, you're going to need to leave this outside for a little while. We just brought this one out, but I can already tell some of these things are going to melt. In fact, some of them already have started. I brought, let's look at this one first. What's this? It's ice, and that ice has already started to melt. It has gone from a, a solid all the way into a liquid, and it's I bet it's gonna melt pretty soon. Let me tell you some of the other things that I have out here. Do you know what that is? That's right, it's a dog treat. Do you think that dog treat's gonna melt? I don't know, we'll have to see. What about this? It's a rock. Do you think that rock's gonna melt? I don't know. What about the flower? Do you think it's going to melt? What about this? Do you know what this is? Oh, it's a chocolate kiss. Take a look under it already. It's We've only been out about a minute or so. And oh my goodness, it's already started to melt. Bummer, I may have to eat that. What about this? Oh my goodness, look at that cookie. That's right. That cookie has already started to melt. And this, a marshmallow. Oh, there's a little piece of it right there. It is starting to. This is called Crisco. It's kind of like butter. It's shortening. We'll have to see if that Crisco will melt. Ah, one of my favorites. You know what this is? An ice cream sandwich. Oh, I cannot wait to see which one of these things will melt all the way and how long it's going to take for them to melt. So I'm going to leave it right here and then I'm going to come back and check it maybe in about 20 or 30 minutes and see if these things have melted. The sun gives us energy and light and heat and that heat likes to melt things. Find some things at your home and see what things the sun will melt. Hey friends, we're back. It's been about 20 minutes since we've left this out in the sun and I wanted us to come back and check it out and see which things had melted. Let's take a look. Ooh, look at where those ice cubes used to be. Instead of ice cubes, now you have liquid. Those totally melted. In fact, that's pretty warm water now. What else? <gasps> that melted, look at that. Oh, my poor ice cream sandwich. He's totally melted. What about the rock? Mm, not so much, he's a solid. He did not melt. Look at my chocolate. Oh, perfect. That thing has melted totally. And probably will be a little bit more liquid than a little bit. Take a look at the cookie. Shooey! That did some good melting too. What about the dog biscuit? Nope, did not melt. What about my marshmallow? You know what? It has not melted yet. It must not be hot enough yet. My flower has wilted a little bit. And then if you take a look at the Crisco, yeah, it really didn't melt. It did a little bit, but not a whole lot. Now, some of these items should have melted more than they did. Sorry, I just licked the chocolate on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, the marshmallow probably should have melted more than it did, and the Crisco should have. So, if you have one of these at home, you can enhance the sun's rays. That means make the sun's rays stronger with one of these. This is a magnifying glass, and I can take, you see how that Right there, the sun's rays are going through the magnifying glass and see where it's really bright right there. If I held this for a while on that, that Crisco would start to melt even more. If I did it on the marshmallow, the same thing. It would enhance it and make it melt even more. But 
what would happen if I came outside with my ice cream sandwich and I didn't want it to melt? I wanted to eat that ice cream sandwich and not have it all over my hands, kind of like that chocolate was right there. What would I do? How would I keep my ice cream sandwich from melting? Do you have any ideas? Ah, I heard a good one. One of my friends said that if I found a place in the shade, I could eat it. But what if I didn't want to move in the shade? What if I wanted to enjoy that sun on my legs or my feet just to feel the sun's warmth? I heard another good idea. I could use an umbrella. Let's see what that umbrella will do. Ah, can you get under here with me? You see the shadow that my umbrella made? So I could eat my ice cream sandwich underneath an umbrella because the umbrella is producing shade. Can you think of something else that might produce shade? I had one of these in my garage as well. I just brought a lid out here. I could use this lid and I could eat it under the lid. The lid's probably not as big. You know, you might be able to come up with something even better maybe a piece of cardboard. But if I'm holding up this lid, I'm gonna have a hard time eating that ice cream sandwich. So maybe I would wanna build my own shelter. Look around at home and see if you can build a shelter out of something fun. Maybe our dinosaur friend over here needed a little shade. If you had some Legos or a box or Legos and paper or a paper plate, Maybe you could make a shade for our dinosaur friend over there. That would be a really fun thing to do. Get creative at home. See if you can make some shade for your toys as well. Hey, thanks for playing. Have a great day. Guess Who's Shadow by Stephen R. Swinburne. This book is read with permission from Boyd's Mills Press. Shadows are everywhere. Once you know they are there, you can find lots of them. You have a shadow too. Your shadow follows you wherever you go. Your shadow can be in front of you. Your shadow can be behind you below you, or next to you. But it is always there. Your shadow appears when sunshine or other light falls on you. The shaded or dark area behind you is called a shadow. If the sun is shining, anything will have a shadow. Some shadows are big. Some shadows are small. You can play a game with shadows. You can go on a shadow hunt. Can you guess whose shadow? Airplane. A toy airplane. Guess whose shadow? A dinosaur. A bird. A bird. Guess whose shadow? I don't know. A people. A bear. Yeah. Guess whose shadow? A swing. Oh yeah, swings. Guess whose shadow? A horsey. The <gasps> dog. I, I thought it was a horsey. It looked like a horsey. It did look like a horsey. Guess whose shadow? A bike. You're right. Bike and a person. That's right. Guess whose shadow? Uh. 
a little boy holding a basketball. It was a big boy, not a little boy. A big boy. Some days it's cloudy and you can't find your shadow. But soon the sun shines and your shadow is right by your side. Shadows make great sunny day friends. Experiment. Shadows change. Materials. Toy or object. Paper. Marker. A sunny spot. Hey guys, we're gonna try an experiment called Shadows Change. So I already set up this experiment on the driveway outside, but this is something that you can do to kind of track some shadows and see how, remember we learned the sun doesn't move, but the earth rotates. And when the earth rotates, it makes it look like the sun is moving in the sky. And that's why we have sunlight during part of the day, and then it's dark at the other part. So what we did was we took a toy, in this case we took a dinosaur, and we put a big piece of paper on the ground and we taped it down so it would stay because it kind of get windy outside. Then we took the toy and put it in the middle. Now, we put some glue underneath the toy so it could stay standing up and not fall over because that's really important for it to stay in the same spot. So you might want to do that or you can get a really, really heavy toy that you know is not going to blow over. So what we did was we put the toy outside and then if you can see right here, there's a little bit of a shadow around the toy. So what I did was I took a marker and I traced around the shadow, kind of like this. Went all the way around the outside. Kind of looks like a dinosaur right there. It's the outline of the dinosaur. Kept going, kept going, kept going. And then you'll notice that some of these markings have numbers next to them. And that's because I was tracking the shadow at different times of the day. Kind of got to go all the way around the toy. There we go. So then I would write next to that shadow what time it is. Right now it is two o'clock. So I would put two o'clock. Now you can see in the picture how all of the shadows kind of look like they're moving. That's because when the earth is rotating, the sun's in different spots. Kind of looks like it's in different spots in our sky. So when the sun is shining this way, it makes the shadow behind the dinosaur. But now you can see that the sun is coming from up there. And when it shines here, that dinosaur blocks the sunlight, creating that shadow. It looks like the shadow is moving. That's because the shadow is moving, because the earth is moving, and the sun is in different positions in the sky. So try this at home. Find a toy that you can track the shadows with and trace them and put the time. And it kind of makes a sundial. A long time ago, people used to use the sun to tell time. They could tell when it was early in the morning, like at nine, because the sun was coming from this side. And then in the evening, the sun was coming from the other side, so they could tell that it had become evening time. So see if you can make one at home too. The Sun, Our Nearest Star by Franklin M. Branley. Illustrated by Edward Miller. Read with permission by Harper Collins Publishers. The Sun, Our Nearest Star. At night, you can see a lot of stars because the sky is dark. When the sky is bright, you can also see a star. It is the sun. The sun is our daytime star. It is also the star closest to us. The sun is very big. It is much bigger than the earth. The sun is almost a million miles across. If earth was the size of a pea, the sun would be the size of a beach ball. The sun is very far away from us. It is much farther than the moon. A spaceship takes three days to reach the moon. It would take more than three years to reach the sun. And you remember the sun is our nearest star. It takes eight minutes for light to travel from our daytime star to Earth. It takes four years for light from the nearest nighttime star to reach us. Most of the stars are much farther away than that. Stars are made of hot gases. In the sun, 
and the other stars there is iron, gold, copper, and tin. They are not solid as they are on earth. All of them are gases because they are so hot. The temperature on the surface of the sun is more than 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature in a very hot oven is only 500 degrees. The sun is so hot that a spaceship could not get close to it. If it ever did, the spaceship would change to gases. Without the sun, earth would be cold and dark. No plants would grow, no animals, no bugs, birds, or flowers. Nothing could live here. The sun keeps us alive. It makes corn grow and apples, wheat, and bananas. Animals eat the plants. We eat the plants and animals. They give us energy. So the energy in our food comes from the sun. It is solar energy. Millions of years ago, earth was covered with swamps and jungles. As plants and wild animals grew, they stored solar energy. When they died, they slowly changed to coal and oil. So, ancient solar energy is stored in coal and oil. Today, we use the stored up solar energy in coal, oil, and gasoline, which is made from oil, to fuel our cars and trucks, airplanes, and rockets. For millions of years, the sun has warmed our planet. It still does. It will keep shining bright and warm for many more millions of years. Find out more about the sun. You can do simple experiments. You can grow a plant, or you can make a sundial. The End Part 2. The Earth. The Earth has water, trees, and people, and grass. How about the Earth is that if you look at it from space, you can see white, blue, and green. That's right, Francis. When you look at the Earth, from outer space. It is blue and it looks a little green and sometimes a little white too if there are clouds around. Can you guys find Earth on all the planets on our flannel board? We said it kind of looks blue and green from outer space. That's right, there it is. Now I have another thing that we used last week to look at the Earth. Do you guys remember what this was called? That's right, it's called a globe. Remember we said the globe was like a picture of the Earth put onto a sphere. And what color did we see a lot of on the globe? Lots of blue. The blue represents water. So Francis, that's why you see a lot of blue from outer space when you're looking at Earth, because the Earth is about 71% water. Wow, so wild. most of the planet is covered with water. That's exactly right. Now the Earth is the, let's count, one, two, three third planet from the sun. And we learned that the planets revolve or orbit around the sun. So sometimes this part of the earth is showing towards the sun while this part of the earth is not quite as close to the sun. That, um, a, re a revolution of the earth around the sun takes about 365 days. Have you heard that number before, Katie? Yeah, that makes the whole year. That's exactly right. So it takes one whole year for the earth to orbit around the sun. That orbit is what gives us summer, winter, oh. spring, and fall. So sometimes we're a little closer to the sun, and it is hot, like in summer. And sometimes we're a little farther away from the sun, and that's when it is... Winter, and it's colder. You're exactly right. Now, I know that the Earth revolves around the sun, but doesn't it also do something like this? Whoa. Okay. Getting yeah. a little dizzy. Katie. Because yeah. I thought that the Earth, like, spun around in a circle, too, doesn't it? That's right. The Earth rotates on its axis. Not, it revolves, but it also 
Rotex. Do it you does have, both at yeah. the same time. Do you remember when um, you did the revolution around? Do you yes. think you can revolve oh. and rotate at the same time? I think so. Okay, I'm ready. Wait, wait, let's count now and be careful. I'll be careful. Three, two, one. Blast off. I'm rotating and I'm revolving slower this time. Yeah, good. <laughs> there she goes. She's going, she's going. Come back, come back. She's coming around. Look, she's still rotating. Rotating and revolving. Awesome. Do you think you understand it now? Yeah, I think so. Now, we said it takes 365 days for the Earth to revolve around the sun. Right. But when it's rotating or spinning like this, Ooh. my head is spinning, it takes 24 hours, which is an entire day. That's a day. Which is why we have daytime and nighttime. Because when the Earth is turning around, when it's rotating, part of the Earth is facing the sun. And when that part of the Earth is facing the sun, the sunlight is shining on it, and that's why it looks like it's day outside and we can see. Then it keeps rotating because it takes a whole day to rotate all the way. And when we're facing away from the sun, it's darker, and that's what gives us nighttime. nighttime. And we have some great books about that, too. And mm -hmm. we have a demonstration to show our friends as well. Okay, good. I can't wait for you to show me what this looks like because I'm getting dizzy from trying. <laughs> demonstration. What makes night? Materials, ball and flashlight. Hey friends, we're gonna do an experiment and a demonstration about day and night and about the earth. We're gonna talk about revolving and rotating. Now, this is a little bitty ball of the earth right here, a globe. This yellow part right there is the United States. So we're about right there. So we talked about revolving and that means that the earth goes around, it orbits or revolves around the sun. So Katie is gonna be the sun. We've got a flashlight because the sun gives us light and heat. And then here's our little sun from earlier. So all right, there we go, I'm the sun. I'm gonna revolve. Now remember, when the earth revolves around the sun, it takes three, about 365 days, so a whole year. So I'm gonna kinda go slow. One whole year, January, February, March, April, May. June, July, August, September, October, November, December, those are the months of the year. Woohoo! We did it. But however, not only does the earth revolve, but it also rotates. Rotates means it goes around on its axis. So the axis is down here, and this is rotating. See how it's just going around and around? It takes 24 hours for the earth to complete one whole rotation. So. I am going to rotate while I revolve. Okay, putting them both together. So yes. The Earth's rotating. Luckily, I'm going to do this. I'm going to spin it. Or ro there we go. We're rotating and we're revolving. And remember, it rotates faster than it revolves because every time it rotates, it's one day. But this big revolution takes one full year. So really, by the time I go around you, I should have rotated this 365 times. Just about. That's really fast. We'd be doing this more like this. Wow, that's really quick. <laughs> so here we go. Look at it rotate. Do, 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 do. I wonder if it really is 365 times. That would be very hard to count. That's kind of cool. So when the sun hits it, that's day for that part of the earth. When it doesn't hit it, then that's night. That's rotation. That's an orbit. And that's about it for the earth. Mm -hmm. If you want to try this at home, you can find a flashlight. I just use my phone because it's got a flashlight on it. And you might find a ball you've got around your house, a tennis ball, a basketball, a soccer ball. Have one person stand with the flashlight. They get to be the sun. It's a pretty cool job. And then the other person has to try to rotate the ball and revolve around the person who's the sun. Not at the same time. If you don't have a stick to put it on, you can do this. Just rotate it in your hands. Woo, that's pretty hard to do. It is hard. <laughs> so see what you've got at home and try it out and see if you can make a demonstration of how the earth revolves and rotates while it's going around the sun. I love it. Thanks, Katie. Since we have day and night and different seasons, the earth is a perfect habitat for us. It has everything that we need. Part three, the moon. Hey friends, it's time to talk about the moon. Climb aboard the spaceship. We're going to the moon. Woo! 
hurry and get ready because we're gonna count down soon. Put on your helmet and buckle up real tight because here comes the countdown. Count with all your might. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off! That was fun, I love it. Hey, what do you know about the moon? It's in the sky. The, it is main. It is made of different things in space. Like, and so meteors hit them, and then it makes a face, kind of like a face. It looks like a face on the moon because there's little bump, little dimps in the moon, moon surface. Those are some great answers. But when do we see the moon? Well, usually we say that we can see the moon at night. The moon is always there, but the moon doesn't make its own light. Remember when we studied the sun, we said that the sun's job was to produce light and heat and energy. Mm -hmm. Now the moon, it doesn't produce its own light. It kind of borrows the light from the sun actually. So the sunlight shines on the moon and when it hits the moon's surface, it bounces back off and that's what we see with our eyes. So I'm not really seeing the moon, but I'm seeing the sun's light bouncing off of the moon. That's right. Well, how come I, sometimes the moon looks like this and sometimes the moon looks like this and sometimes I don't see the moon at all? That's a good question. Well, first, during the day, it's hard to see the moon in general because the sun, sun is out and so there's so many sun rays coming from the sun mm -hmm. that's really hard to see the sun rays bouncing off the moon. Sometimes you can see it in the day though and it's pretty cool when you can. At night, it shines really bright because the sun's rays are hidden and so we can see that light bouncing off the moon. Now, I'm glad you asked about the different shapes because sometimes it looks like the moon is a different shape, but mm -hmm. it's really not. It stays the whole, it stays a sphere the whole time, but sometimes we see different shapes, kind of like this. Ah, that's like a crescent moon. Yeah, it kind of looks like a smile or a crescent shape, that's mm -hmm. right. Now, remember we learned about shadows when we talked about the sun and how shadows are made when something blocks the sun's light. So in outer space, Earth actually blocks the light from the sun. Oh. So when you see that dark spot and it looks like the moon is a different shape, it actually means that the Earth is blocking the rays from the sun. So if the sun rays were coming straight from in front of me, and here is the Earth right here, it's blocking the rays and making a shadow on the moon. Now the shadow kind of looks like it moves too. So for a day, you might see the whole moon like this, and then it might slowly start to cover and a little bit mm -hmm. more, a little bit more until you might not see the moon at all because the earth is blocking it completely. Mm -hmm. And then you might get to see a little bit come back all the way until you can see the whole moon again. And then it starts over. That's actually called the phases of the moon. And it's really fun if you go outside sometimes at night and you look at what the moon looks like and you can draw it in your journal. Mm -hmm. And then the next day you come and you draw it again and you'll actually get to see kind of what the phases look like over time. It's a fun experiment. That's awesome. You know, I've never been to the moon. Have you? Nope, I've never been to the moon. What are people, what is the name of people who have been to the moon? What do we call them? An astronaut. That's right. Astronauts have been to the moon. They got to see the moon. They took pictures of the moon. They even brought samples of the moon back. We are going to make something that kind of looks like the moon. It's not the real moon, but it's a scientific experiment. It's going to be a chemical reaction. It's called the fizzy moon. And so, Come right back with us and you're gonna to get to see what happens with the fizzy moon. And then I'm gonna show you how to make your very own fizzy moon too. Experiment. Fizzy moon rocks. Materials. Baking soda, food coloring, water, vinegar, containers, plastic wrap, freezer. Hey friends, you ready to make some fizzy moon rocks? Me too. This is easy peasy and you don't need too many things to make it. All you need is baking soda, white vinegar. I used some food coloring, I used blue. And you need water, some measuring cups, and a dish. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Take your baking soda and measure out one cup of baking soda. Pour it in there. I like to pour my things um, on top of or above my container so that if I spill, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, pour it in there. 
and I want my moon fizzy rock to be kind of a light blue. So I'm taking my blue food coloring and I'm mixing it in with the water. Let's do four drops. Ready? One, two, three, four. That's pretty dark. When you use food coloring, you want to have a protected surface. I put this plastic down on my countertop so it doesn't mess up my surface. Stir it, stir it. Now I'm not going to pour all of this water in my container. I'm only going to pour a quarter of a cup. So I have my quarter of a cup measuring cup. I'm going to pour that in there. Oops, I got a little bit too much. Pour it back. All right. And then I'm going to pour it into my baking soda. Let's stir it, stir it. Kind of cool, isn't it? Continue stirring. So it looks a little bit like Play-Doh. Some of you heard, I heard some of you say that, that it's not as dark as it was, and it's not. My baking soda is white. So that made the blue a little bit lighter blue. Now I'm gonna take my hands and I am going to form fizzy moon rocks, balls. So I've got a ball here, I'm gonna put it over here. And then I've got a ball right here. What you need to do next is to take some saran wrap or plastic wrap and wrap up your fizzy moon rocks. I already did that, um, and then you're going to put that in the freezer. So I've already taken care of that. Here's my plastic wrap. These are ones that I made earlier, and ooh, they're nice and cold. They look a little bit different. I might have added a little bit more food coloring to mine, but they are harder. These are pretty soft. So I'm going to reuse my plastic wrap. Wrap those up. And I'm gonna put these in my freezer for about 30 minutes, and then these are gonna be ready for our experiment. Now, these are already ready because I just pulled them from the freezer. I'm gonna put these back in my plate so it doesn't make a mess. Can you see them in there? You can, can't you? I got two right there. Then I'm gonna take my vinegar and pour a little bit of it into this dish. Now, if you still have those pipettes that we used earlier in, in the season, pipettes are fun to use. I didn't have my pipettes anymore. I couldn't find them. So with vinegar, you can either use your fingers and sprinkle it on there. Oh, did you hear that? There's some gases coming out of there. When I mix vinegar with the baking soda, a chemical reaction happens and my solids turn into something else. So let's see what happens. You can even hear the gas. I'm gonna use my spoon. I think I want a little bit more. Do you hear them? Do you see them? It almost looks like it's making craters on our moon. Let's listen again. And that's how you make fizzy moon rocks. It looks like the moon now. It looks like the craters on the moon. Isn't that cool? Now, if you make more fizzy moon rocks and maybe you make some for your little brother or your little sister or for a friend, these would even make really good fun birthday presents or for a birthday party. Before you make your ball, you could put a surprise in there. So if you had like a little dinosaur or a jewel or some little toy you could put inside there and then freeze, it would be like a surprise inside your fun fizzy rock. Okay, I just picked it up and it feels really cool. But look, our solid is turning into a liquid. Yeah, that's kind of cool. So I hope you have fun making your fizzy moon rocks. It sounds really neat. Hey, if you want to take a picture of it and send it to us at auburndayschool.com, I would love to see it. Thanks a lot. Have a lot of fun. Hey friends, thanks for learning with us today. Let's review a little bit of what we've learned using our song. Oh, what's in outer space? 
Oh, what's in outer space? The big bright moon, a rocket zoom. That's what's in outer space. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? The shining sun, our only star, that's what's in outer space. Oh, what's in outer space? Oh, what's in outer space? The planets going around the sun, that's what's in outer space. Awesome. Let's review. Let's review everything we've learned about the solar system today. We've got a lot to review. First, we learned about the sun and how it's in the center of our solar system because all the planets revolve around it. They travel around it. Mm -hmm. There are eight planets. And the moon is over here. So here I have our eight planets. And then we have the moon and the moon revolves around the earth. We learned that the sun is made up of gases and then it gives us heat, energy, and light. You're right. And plants need the sun to grow. Animals need the sun to stay warm. And we need the sun to grow and stay warm as well. Because guess what? We eat the animals and the plants. Mm -hmm. So the sun is extremely important to us. That's right. It's very important for our habitat. Mm -hmm. We also learned that the earth is our planet. That it revolves around the sun, just like all the other planets, and it takes one year, yep, one year for the Earth to revolve all the way around the sun. And don't forget that the Earth rotates on its axis. Remember this? It rotates. And it takes 24 hours for it to rotate one time. That's right. And like we said earlier, we've got the moon right here, and it revolves around the Earth. And it looks like it changes shapes, but remember, it doesn't really change. That just means the Earth is blocking some of the sun's rays from reflecting off the moon. That's exactly right. Now, we had a lot of fun today and did a lot of cool experiments. So if you try any of these at home, make sure you take a picture and share it with us on our Facebook page. And you can get all of the resources that we use at auburndayschool.com. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.